Hey guys, welcome to another vloggy style video. I will finish it up at the end, so stay hang in there with me, and I will see you at the end of the video. All right, guys, enjoy. All right, so the beginning of the week, and I was just flipping through this old magazine here. It's an old, uh, uh, old issue of Crochet Today, which I think is still being published. This one is January 2014. So when I opened it up and turned to this, I thought, oh, this is perfect for that new yarn, that MVP uh, Hirschner's Worsted. This will be a fun hat to make in that. And uh, so I looked it up. And there it is. It's a free pattern on your inspiration. So I'm going to give that one a try. Uh, I'll still be working on my sweater throughout the week. But I thought I'll give, um, I want to do something with that. And I'm going to probably start with um, the, uh, maybe the Lakers, maybe the Chicago Bears, probably Chicago Bears. All right, there you go. All right, so this is how it's crocheting up, and so what I think, because there's so much yarn in that ball, I think I'm going to get at least three projects out of this ball of yarn, so I'm going to go with this crochet hat, and this is how it is crocheting up, as you can see, it's like a, it's kind of like a pattern there, and uh, this is in the 15 minute break I took, uh, what did I get, round five, I, f I finished round five, and um yeah so i'm making the large size on this one and let's see what else i want to say about it oh so i'm going to knit this up as well and i think what i'll do is i will try to make a chicago bear same exact pattern uh that i use for boris the bear uh, but I'm going to, instead of that banana berry, I'm going to use this uh, MVP uh, yarn for the sweater. And yeah, I'll just gift that whole little set to Steve. And then I'll also knit it up. So maybe all three pieces will go to Steve. Because he is a huge Bears fan, of course. And, you know, I often think of my dad um, when... I think about the Chicago Bears and Steve. My father passed away um, within the first year of our marriage. And so Steve didn't really get to know him. He met him, but he didn't get to know him. But man, if they had a met. My dad was a, a uh, intense um, Bears fan as well. So uh, I could imagine they would have had a good time together. Uh, even though, whether the Bears win or lose, they would have had a good time together. So anyway so this this will be made in honor of my father but as a gift for steve okay so this worked up quick uh started and finished today now the navy blue is a color um also a part of the Hirschner's worsted line and it's called midnight and i didn't think it was gonna match but it matches perfectly with the blue that is in the mvp so yeah this hat was started and finished today and i'll come back later and show you the entire thing um i love how it worked up i love how they did the braids all right so on to the knitting um yeah i wish i had started with that midnight color for the ribbing but i'm just making the uh pearl Ho soho uh pattern once again pearl soho is called the thank you hat and uh but yeah it is it's very interesting how it is uh knitting up I am going to have so much yarn left. I may get four projects out of this. And I think I'm changing my mind on the bear. But we will see. Alright guys. That's crochet. That's knitting. Now which one do you prefer? I definitely have a preference. And I will tell you when I reveal both of these finished projects. Fully. At the end of the video. Okay bye. So I got this macrame cord along with a kiss clasp uh, coin purse frame. I used, I uh, believe I used some lace uh, weight yarn that I got from 
that yarn came from Daiso. The clasp frame came from uh, BB Craft, and the macrame cord is from uh, Amazon. And so, of course, I wanted to make a coin purse. I've wanted to do one of these for the longest time, and I decided to just go ahead and wing this using my favorite stitch. I used a J hook, I believe, but you can see it there. And here is what I came up with. I love how it came out. It's the cutest little thing. You can put your coins in it. You can put your tech in it, like your earbuds. Uh, but it's just that you could put stitch markers possibly, but I did not line this one. Uh, I just used a dense stitch. So here's the inside. Uh, yeah, I like how it came out. I'm going to make some more of these and play around with the pattern. Pattern. But yeah, this was a project that I did just today and today is Tuesday the 26th and it was really quick. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, so this is the stamp set. It is from May May Made It. It's a monthly subscription and uh, this one is the scripture one, but they do have one that is not scriptural. Um, but yeah, so I saw this. I had to go for it. So I just looked into all of my supplies. This is when it comes in handy to be a craft supply hoarder. I didn't have to go to the store. So I'm just sharing with you some of the things here that I am going to be using. Um, when I saw the stamp set, uh, yeah, you can see it's stamped out right there. I just uh, was like, I got to make something. So I went and watched one of my favorite uh, paper crafters. I will link her channel. And uh, yeah, I got inspired to make a little booklet again, but a little bigger than the first one I made that I had uh, shared with you guys maybe two years ago. And I ended up gifting that one to Seta. Uh, this one has already kind of told me who it, who it wants to be belong to but anyway these are the supplies some cut apart some stickers from the dollar tree uh some other stickers and uh some pretty papers uh little envelopes and here's the booklet so with this booklet i put it together following a tutorial and it is like a mini album, but it has some pocket pages, which I'm going to attempt to show you. And um, wherever you see a little notch, I, that is a pocket page where I can slide something down in between into the pocket. Um, so this will be a fun, fun little booklet. It will be a whip for a couple of weeks because it's going to take me a minute to get this one done. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show it to you because I started working on it this week. And I wanted to show you that I'm living up to my name as the Crafty Nomad. Because I am uh, doing some paper crafting this week. Uh, you never know. When inspiration hits, you just got to go for it. So, yeah, that's one of those pocket pages right there I'm trying to awkwardly show you. I think you guys will enjoy this once it comes comes together um, since it's a part of the week's crafts I definitely wanted to share it here and um, yeah so look forward to seeing this one come together bye all right so I spent tonight and I punched a whole bunch of stuff I used my die cutting machine it's from spellbinders and a bunch of dies but here I'm showing you the things that I've already put in the book just to hold their places I wanted to decide where I wanted to put each tag. So there's some tags and some envelopes. Now the envelopes, I'd use an envelope punch board, which I will show you here in a minute. I didn't secure them yet, but um, they are envelopes. Some of the pockets are side loading and some are top loading. And then this side loading one, I did put a cut apart from the paper collection. Um, some of the pages have little cards that you can just cut them. Like, I think this is like three by two and a half or something like that. And that I fit nicely in that pocket. Here's another little envelope. The paper collection is a crafty one. But I used the, the size that didn't show the crafty things. Because the person who's going to get it is not a crafty person necessarily. More tags. That's a top loading pocket. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, you know, decide down the line exactly what else is gonna go where, but I punched tons of things, and I'll show you that in another clip, but, uh, this is another cut apart in the side loading pocket, I'll probably put something on the back of that, slide it back in there, 
Uh, and then there's uh, another envelope there. So, yeah, like I said, I didn't glue any of the envelopes together. I'll do that another night. Uh, but yeah, so this is how the book looks. It's coming along nicely. I'm going to try not to overdo it to where it's so fat because I'm going to be mailing this, but it will be thick. And then that's the envelope punch board. It's really easy, easy to use. They have them at Tuesday morning at a good price and on Amazon. So check it out. All right. Bye, guys. So I just wanted to show you really quickly some of the things I cut out. The white tags are from a punch. I have an actual punch, a tag punch. And the rest are die cuts. I use my Spellbinders um, uh, die cutter and a bunch of different dies. I decided to go with hearts and butterflies and tags for the most part. So I'm just giving you a little look at what I was able to punch out. A couple of jars and flowers. I uh, thought they would be nice. And I even, um, the butterflies were really delicate. And um, that's just a different kind of a tag. But if you see that purple there, I actually cut that out of foam. I wanted to see how that would work. And so, yeah, I don't know if it'll make it into the book because it's an off color. But these are the things um, that I made and purple there's nothing else purple in it so i'll probably save that that's another cut of parts i wanted to show you but yeah these are all the things so the next time you see this book will probably uh be in a whole nother video and it will be completed i just wanted to give you an idea of the process um that's another jar die cut came in pieces i don't even know how to put it together but oh well <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. So yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying the project, but you can see it takes a lot to get ready for one of these. So a little break today. Uh, we had a beach day with three other families and we had a blast. We live in this place that people uh, pay thousands of dollars to come and visit. Uh, and all we have to do is get in the car and drive. Now this is about an hour's drive away from my home. Um, and uh it was just a blast the water was super cold i tried to put my toes in but the kids thoroughly enjoyed themselves and so did we as adults we had a great time um so yeah i thought i would craft but i did not bring any oh jordan fell asleep guys <laughs> he stayed up all night but i didn't bring in i brought the crafting but i never took it out i just enjoyed the company and enjoyed the scenery and enjoyed the day so i just wanted to share a little bit of my saturday with you guys hope you had a good one too and let's wrap this video up all right back at it saturday or sunday morning basketball um enjoyed this we won um Jordan is um, getting back used to playing sports regularly and we have to get used to going regularly so that was great then I was walking back to the car and noticed all these beautiful flowers I wanted to share them with you everything is so so pretty it's a beautiful day today it is actually a little bit muggy but it's the flowers are, look at that tree it's so beautiful I just wanted to share it okay bye everybody it's kim the crafty nomad and uh yep you've been watching clips up to this point so you have seen all the things i've worked on i'll show you what's going on at this time because i shot most of those clips throughout the week and then all the way even up until today so you got a little bit of slice of life uh <laughs> kind of stuff and every once in a while i like to do those kinds of videos i used to do them a lot more but then I think what happened is uh, COVID-19 and there was no life. <laughs> but now, you know, we're back, we're out and about. And so you got to see a little bit of our beach or me on the beach and a uh, little bit of uh, things that have been going on. But anyway, I'm here now just to show you uh, where we're at with different projects and definitely some updates. So. And let me go ahead and uh, tell you where to find me on the internet. Uh, I am at Kim the Crafty Nomad on Instagram. I am Pettis Kim Knits on uh, Ravelry. That is P E T T I S K I M K N I T S. Follow me over there. 
Um, where else can you find me? There's a Facebook group for this um, podcast as well as my email address and an Etsy shop. All of that stuff will be linked down below, okay? So we got a lot going on today. And since we've already shot so much video, I'm going to try to make this part quick and give you a little bit of upcoming and then close out with a little slideshow. So, um, yeah. So let's go with finishes. Okay. So you know I got those little purse frames from BB Craft, and I will eventually do a separate video for those for BB Craft and all the things that I got from them and what I ended up making uh, with those. But I got those purse, those coin purse frames, and I don't know what made me decide to jump in and deal with them, but and try to work on them. But I did. And what I did was, um, you've seen it in the clips. You saw these two. So you saw this one. And I just used a two millimeter macrame cord. And I used my favorite stitch on that. And that is the Herringbone Half Double Crochet. They don't need to be lined. I mean, look at them. You can't, you know, they're very, I love them. They're very vintage looking. But they, no, even if you put coins in here, they won't fall through. It should be good but anyway little coin purse tech pouch and then I made this one which was more of a rounded bottom and I actually put some adornment on this one so this one is more let's see if I can open it up and sort of pooch it out so you can see it's a little bit different the first one had like a oval bottom this one has a rounded bottom like that and they all have a little a little uh, area here where you can hook a charm on so I just decided to add one of the girls because she matched the the yellow clasp so I got that one done same thing same stitch um, yep same stitch for that one it's just that the bottom of this one was a circle the other one was a oval okay so uh, that's how it looks open and you know it could open all the way like that and you could put a lot of little things down in there okay so that's that one and then i you know i got this macrame cord here as well from and the white macrame cord came from amazon from the same seller and i also got this lavender one now i can't i couldn't find what i did with them the cream color one but it's two millimeter this one is three and it's much thicker so I, I did, I'll show you in a minute a whip of another coin purse. However, I felt like the class is so thick and the clasp was just too small. It was too bunched up. So I, I, I got some more clasps that are bigger that are coming. And so I'm going to try that one, but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but I also got this macrame cord from uh, Hershner's. I got like four colors. And this is the macrame cotton and you get 250 or 246 yards on this ball and uh it is 85 percent cotton 15 percent polyester and it is a chainette kind of the way it's put up the put up is a chainette um now what I, this color here is apricot and what I wanted to see, they do recommend using this with an H hook, even though this is macrame cotton. Um, they do recommend uh, eight, uh, five millimeter uh, hook and needles on this. This is made in Turkey. It's considered a number four. All right. So I did actually start working with it in this color. I believe I have a green and a blue as well, but. Um, to keep the video short i didn't want to do a haul but i did start working with this one okay and so you can see what i mean by a chain at. i think it's a chain at. yeah okay and yeah so that's that one and here's what i came up with on that another little vintagey looking change purse with a multicolor um, clasp. I love the clasp with the big old beads at the top. I like all of them, but I really enjoy these that I got from BB Craft. 
They open up like that. And again, it's very similar to this one. Actually, the same, made it with the same way. And they are similar in size as well. So I really think I like the um, this cotton, this uh, macrame cotton for these change purses. They're, fa they're fairly sturdy. I don't think they're going to peel at all. And yeah, I really enjoy these. So all of these all still need a charm right there. But they're still all set to go, okay? So that was that one. And then the only other finish I wanted to show you, uh, you guys saw me working on it at the, throughout the week. And I probably got to do some more work on this pom-pom. But I did finish the crochet uh, Team Cheers hat. And I used the Hirschner's MVP yarn, the worsted MVP, in the colorway um, orange and navy, which are the colors for the Chicago Bears. And, sorry, um, good to see that. And that's how my braids came out. And down here, this is actually just the Hirschner's worsted in the colorway Midnight, but it really did match perfectly with the blue that was in the MVP. And so that is how they, it came out. Now, I've made the large size, and I didn't measure this, but I feel like this is really small. I really feel like it's actually for a kid. So, but this worked up real quick in one day. I love how that yarn knits up. And, I mean, um, crochets up. And I think those are all my finishes. So I'm going to move on and talk about a whip and tell you, I know you saw in the earlier clips that I had been working on a knitted um, hat. And honestly, in, in the... Um, Clip, I said I was going to tell you which way was my favorite, the knitted or the crochet. And hands down, I really enjoyed the crochet much more than I like this yarn. Crocheted up. This is the MVP from Hershner's. And this is the orange and navy. And you already saw the clips of the knitting. Well, I was almost finished with that hat. And I looked and I had made a huge mistake on the decreases. And at that point, I just said, you know what? I'm First, I tried to fix it. I, had, I tried to drop down, pull the knit, the, the stitch back up to the top. And the stitches were just not coming out right. And the fact that I really like the knitting, knitting more than, I mean, I like the crochet version more than the knitted. I just decided to rip the whole thing out and start again. So, I was initially going to take that, um, sort of mimic this hat, do the ribbing in the mid, in the midnight or the, what was it called? In this color, this dark navy, but it's called midnight, I think, or whatever I just said before. And, um, I was going to do that and do the ribbing part in that and then come in with the MVP, but once I decided to rip the whole thing out i was like honestly i really don't like it knitted up so let me just start another crochet project so i'll move into whips and show you what i'm doing now i'm doing one of those hats that you just make a whole strip and end up sewing it together for the hat and I just started that this morning, and this is where I'm at. I was working on it during the basketball game this morning. And I think, you know, this is going to work out really quickly. I'm just using, I'm still using herringbone half double crochet. And I am doing back loops only. And even though this is a very busy yarn and you can't see the actual texture, I'm going to make another one of these in a solid so you can see the texture. But I still like this so much better as a crochet yarn. And that is very unusual for me. Usually, um, these um, variegated or different, these colorful yarns, I usually end up liking um, the knitted version a little bit better than the crochet version, but not so with this one. I just really enjoy how it looks crocheted up, okay? Um, so, yeah. 
that's what I decided to do. So that's my first whip. I am really, I did one of these hats before with Bob Wilson, one, two, three, where you do the flat and then, um, I think it's, she's crocheted with Sarah now. I don't know. Uh, but she changed her name. Uh, she took a long break and came back. But I um, have done one of these, but not with herringbone half double crochet. And I have a whole nother, I got other things that I'm going to do to this. So it's really going to be my own in the end. But um, but yeah, I think I'll get this finished today because it's working up pretty quickly. Um, and maybe it'll be either the last finish for the month of July or it'll be the first finish for the month of August. Can you believe it's August um, tomorrow? All right, so that's the first whip I wanted to show you. The second whips are more change purses. So here is um, that same yarn as this one. But this one is, I, I watched a tutorial and got a better idea on how to put this clasp on and have it not give me no trouble. So uh, I just went ahead and I'm doing it similar to that. Um, and I, um, it's just, I started with a rounded bottom and just like an amigurumi increase, uh, and then you stop increasing and just start going up. Um, but uh, why did I stop? Oh, because we were going to Jordan's basketball game this morning, so I went ahead and stopped, and I haven't gone back to put the clasp on, but I think it's going to work out really cute, and um, if I get it done before I'm ready to upload the video, I'll pop a picture in somewhere around in here. Otherwise, you'll see this on another um, video, okay? So that's that one. Now, I brought out, remember I told you I made one with this. This is three millimeter cord. And it, it's really thick. And this one is, it started out with single crochets. And then I did a few rows of the um, herringbone half double crochet. And it's all finished off. And I really did try to put a clasp on it before. But it did not come out well. It was not, it was like lopsided. So I took the whole thing off and decided to wait until I get these clasps that are a little bit bigger. And then I'll finish that off. So that's a whip. The last whip th that I worked on this week that I actually put some work in on um, was the, uh, what was it? The, I'm um, sorry, the sweater. I did work on my uh, <laughs> what did Linda Jean call it? My February March is on sweater. <laughs> Started out as the February lady sweater, and then I, I have uh, made it a fusion. I made it a mashup of knitting and crochet, and so the top part is all knitted, and then all this beautiful work down here is crochet. This is truly going to be a winter time. Uh, I think my California winter time, this will be enough, you know, just not even with a coat. Um, but, you know, definitely something I could wear in Chicago or uh, just Cal in California winter time. <laughs> I could wear this as a jacket. It's definitely going to be enough. So I think the last time you saw it, it was probably right here and I'm a little bit further along. And I, this is my third ball of the yarn that I have and this that pattern is a yarn eater so um I'll probably put a few, few more repeats on at least one more full repeat on this today and um a lot of the yarn will get eaten up but I still am, don't think I really needed to get uh any more of this I think this will be enough well probably won't be but anyway I already bought some more I bought two more balls of this just in case um but here you go that's how much I have left and yep this ball might finish the sweater and then the next ball will be for the arms i think we'll see um but yeah it's coming along i so enjoy it i'm very much i'm very pleased with the choice that i made here uh so far uh again i do have to figure out the the parts that are a little bit off but you know the more the heavier it gets the less off it looks at uh these points where see how it pooches out right there 
the heavier it gets it seems like that's just dropping out a little bit because to me that was way more pronounced before okay so that's that those are the whips those are the finishes that we'll talk about today um there are other projects that i worked on throughout the month of july um that will be for the fall you're on the youtube hot but i don't actually think i worked on those at all this week um but i will begin to pick those up because now it's august which means i have a month and 20 days actually a month and maybe two weeks to finish up everything so i can be ready for the big re re <laughs> the big reveal day on um the first day of fall which i believe is the 20th or the 21st but we'll figure it out and we will start to tease and get ready for that but i'm very excited for the fall i already have in my mind you know props and things i want to use to uh take the photos as we pr as i present my reveal to you i look forward to seeing what everybody else is doing as well but for the projects for today that's all i'm going to show so now this today is the last day of um oh wait 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 i have another whip throughout the week you did see that there were some shenanigans right there were shenanigans and that was the paper crafting so i i, I lived up to my name as the, of the crafty nomad and i went into a little bit of paper crafting this week and really um i got that stamp set and the stamp set completely inspired me i was like i want to use this stamp set and so far i only used one of them but i do have plans to use the rest of those stamps in this project so what i said in the clip is very true i went and i found one of my very favorite uh, paper crafters and her name is lyric lover and some numbers i'll put her in the description box below she does really great paper crafting tutorials that are really simple and easy to understand but you come out with a project that is so gorgeous and so uh i have previously made one of her booklets and when she made her booklet she wrote in i think song lyrics is what she sort of built her book on and when i did mine i built it on um psalm 91 and i actually um uh gifted that to seta um and so i'm doing another one very similar but it's a bigger book the one that we did for seta was much much smaller but this one is bigger and that's the book the cover and there's nothing in it but i showed you in the clip some of the cutouts that we have and some of the pocket pages you can see with the tags sticking out i just wanted to put those tags in place so i'll know where i want to have them down the line and yeah it's just um some side pockets as well and yeah that is how that is coming out and uh yeah you can see how the tags can pull out and there'll be the tags will be embellished so the book will get a lot thicker like right now it's fairly flat it will get i have plans i've, I've pulled out all kinds of things and found some things that I didn't even know I had. I really was so inspired by that stamp set. So there's gonna be a lot of strawberries. Um, and I was watching uh, <laughs> Mama Lama Kayla and she was like, um, saying she was into strawberries and that stamp set made me get into strawberries. So there's gonna be a lot of strawberry embellishments and things like that on this. Um, um, but yeah, I still have not picked. And this will also be sort of an illustrated faith kind of thing it will be a scripture uh i haven't picked out the scripture yet um and i was i was trying to say before and i don't know if i'll be able to show you on any of this the paper craft uh the the crafting um paper set that i was using is very much crafty theme but the paper is um double-sided so i use this side which is flowers but i could have used this side and you would see some of that crafty theme coming out um there's another one i was going to show you here um this is the side i'm using but on this side you see where some of the craftiness is over here right and let me see if there's another one that shows that other side 
no, that's just flowers on that side. And on this one, yeah, just flowers and flowers. But now you can see it. So it says crafting is a way of life. So on this, so you can see that on that side. But I'm actually using this side as my main side. So yeah, that's what I am doing there. So that, and then it had like a couple of little uh, four by four cutout pages. So I, there are a bunch of them, but only a few of them didn't have crafty, um, crafty themes on them so or sayings on them so I didn't use those because this is going to go to somebody who is not necessarily crafty so I didn't want to make it crafty themed so that's that that's my final whip so finally I want to come uh, to you guys with a video on um, the month of July we all made the Christmas spirit gnomes and I didn't bring mine over here but that's okay you've already seen them I finished mine and a lot of us finished them early in the month but a lot of you came in this week and so uh, I have created a slideshow or I haven't created it yet so my plan is to create a slideshow to show you all of the gnomes that came in and then we'll come back and we'll announce uh, who won that make along we will do a drawing for all the folks who participate I want to say thank you to everybody who joined me on this uh, Christmas spirit uh, Christmas in July gnome make along I really appreciate you guys supporting me through that um, man I appreciate got appreciate you guys so much I know you could be doing anything you choose to do what you want to do with your time and the fact that you choose some to use some of that and spend it uh, with me or work on a project that I'm working on is really encouraging so I really really thank you for that and without further ado uh, let me just sign off <laughs> thank you for watching and uh, please join me again um, we'll talk more throughout the week more videos coming up um, until we meet again keep it crafty and without further ado Let's look at some gnomes, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.